So, I am absolutely useless in front of a crowd. And as friendly as you are and as informal as this is, you are a crowd. Um, so, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the two places that I've visited in the last few months. And uh, because there are quite a few people who are going to share their stories and I'm more interested in what they have to say, I'm going to try and run through this as quickly as humanly possible. So if you see an interesting picture or something that you don't understand that I'm saying, stop me and I'll go back to it. So these are the two events. One is in Berlin, Republic of 15. Uh, but I won't talk about the event. I'll talk about the small little gathering that I was part of, which is sort of in the middle of it. And of course, there's the Maker Fair Shenzhen, which is the wrong way to pronounce Shenzhen, but uh, other people will talk about Shenzhen, I'll talk about Maker Camp, which is a seven-day event that led up to Maker Fair. Okay, so Republica is pretty huge, something that happens in Europe, it's a bit like uh, the TED of Europe. Um, it's not uh, focused entirely on, uh, it's not directly relevant to what we do at Maker Fairs, but the group that I was part of, we sort of created an ad hoc maker area hub in the middle of this conference. So I won't tell you about the conference, you can look that up and there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, this is to get give you a flavor of Berlin. Uh, this happened on the 1st of May, May Day, uh, where everything, can we turn off the lights for a second? Because the pictures are not adjusted, so it's going to be quite dark and I'm horrible at taking pictures. Um, so I just take lots of them. Okay. So Berlin is uh, completely crowded on the 1st of May. All the streets are closed down in this particular area called Kreuzberg, and it's party central. Um, it looks pretty impressive. But the thing that I want to talk to you about is GIG, and GIG is Global Innovation Gathering. Um, it is a coming together of different people from various parts of the world. Usually they run communities or hubs or fab labs or maker spaces in different parts of uh, Africa mostly, uh, South America, and two from Asia. One of them was me. So I'm going to introduce every single one of them and what they do. I'm kidding. Um, we did the whole bar camp style thing, and this is even before the, the conference. Um, so a lot of fun was had. It's all very community and everything. So this was in a, in a neighborhood. Uh, we had a little sort of a weekend flea market where we had people from different parts of Berlin come over and we had a little maker repair section that was going on. Uh, so sort of, you know, to get everybody from the gig gang to get a feel for, for Berlin. Yay, 3D printing. Uh, this is the makings of the selfie booth. If you want to know about the selfie booth, come to the maker fair. Um, so, as part of this thing, we got a chance to look around Berlin. Uh, these are co-working spaces and collaborative uh, spaces. This area is called Stadtbad. Um, looks very cool, but the, it's a community where uh, young people have it, uh, find it difficult to get into the work um, and be productive members of society. So, um, this area used to be a giant swimming pool which is now turned into a giant discotheque. <laughs> wow. nice. So the, entire, the, the, the giant pool that you're seeing was built sometime in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, and all the incredible German engineering you're seeing at the back has converted this entire space into a sound machine. Wow. So they used the reverberation of the tiles to basically blow the windows off this building. But that happens at night. It's like a typical underground club. Uh, during the day, uh, they have an outdoor area where they involve the community, they grow stuff, uh, so they have their own hydroponics and things. Um, this is the shower area, it used to be the shower area. <laughs> so what is it now? Right now it's not being used, but they're planning to use it for Cubicles. fun things. <laughs> Cubicles is one of the ideas, but... Co-working space. Yes. Co space. Yes. <laughs> it is co-working spaces. The, the bathtubs are sort of built into the wall, so they've put like planks of wood on top of it and you're using it as, yeah, chairs actually, put a table in front of it. Um, and of course, you know, there has to be a coffee place. Without coffee places, none of these things would function. Um, this is uh, called Factory, I'm going quite quickly, this is good. And Factory Berlin is huge, uh, this is um, one half of a panorama, so you get a sense of the thing. These little fenced up places that you're seeing, that is where the Berlin Wall used to be. 
nobody really cares about the Berlin Wall. Every time you ask somebody as a tourist, where was the wall, they have to sort of figure out, wait, hang on a second. So it doesn't really exist, uh, except in um, places like that. And you have a little memorial, you see things. Um, so we got to see other places. This is a university where they're talking about wearable tech. This is interesting because, not because of the hand, I'll come to that. Uh, it's a hoodie with uh, built-in soft speakers. And um, the sort of, whatever you call these things on the side, uh, have gesture recognition. So when you pull on one, you change the sound. When you pull on the other, you increase and decrease the volume. So it's all sort of built into it. Anyway, so fun projects like that. And of course, the hand. What is with the hand? Uh, it was just something that was hanging out of a shelf. I wanted to get, you know, how incredibly organized all of the little things are. Our maker space is not so organized, but this is Germany after all. <laughs> uh, I have a picture that says not nothing about Germany. I saw something similar in Australia. Uh -huh. oh. So I guess it's the person that's running it, right? Ouch. <laughs> not much help there. <laughs> So this is the only other touristy thing I was able to do through the bus. I was able to take a picture of touristy things. Didn't have time to do anything else. Uh, this is an amazing um, collective, cooperative, co-working space uh, called the Think Farm. You can't see it on the sign, but Think Farm. And this is my favorite picture of all because it says kaput on it. <laughs> you don't have to learn German to know what it means. Right? Okay. <laughs> um, Think Farm. Think Farm is brilliant because uh, it's a large space in a typical neighborhood and is, they house, uh, again, typical um, companies that have a social agenda. So it's a bit like the hub in Singapore. Um, but you also see 3D printers. The way they run this space and fund it is uh, brilliant. They have a model where they make and they market and they sell their own brand of beer. And that's how they support the space. So part of the revenue that comes in from selling beer, and beer is very, very common uh, everywhere in Germany. You can have beer on the, sub, on the MRT. And you can walk in and out of it without even thinking twice. So it's very much in the culture. So they run the place. They've got a nice little uh, brand thing going. So they promote that. And the, the funds that come from it go into keeping the space alive. Of course, they have you know uh, their own built uh, loft and foosball table and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, this is uh, a new space, uh, which is Impact Hub Berlin. And that was the only sign for the place that I could find. It's this tiny little thing on a peg somewhere on a wall. Because this was the first day that they had uh, opened up and they finally found a home for themselves. So we were there to basically inaugurate the place with this huge media event. And the next day was the, the conference. So, of course, we had to have another bar camp while we were there. Uh, this is the area which happens to be around the corner from Checkpoint Charlie, which is the only other Berlin Wall crossing that uh, touristy thing that I was able to do. Anyway, so this is Republica. This is the event actual. It's huge, lots of stuff going on, but right in the middle of it, we have the makerspace, which we sort of created. Uh, so all the people from the different parts, the Global Innovation Gathering, uh, had these projects and we were sort of occupying that space to engage audiences while they were going through it. So while you had some interesting projects like this, this is a, uh, an entire habitat built out of uh, water containers and I think pallets. Can't really see it. So a lot of making happened at the, at the workspace. Uh, this is workshops from uh, I think the folks from Kenya. Uh, from, this is the delegation from uh, Brazil. They were always like in party mode, uh, which is excellent. They really kept the place alive. But yeah, lots of fun, interesting things going on. This was amazing. This was like a sort of self-contained uh, house called the Little House. It's brilliant. Lots of fun things going on. Gonna move things along. And this is my thing. This is the reason I was there. This is the homemade coffee machine. Uh, so I got a whole bunch of Germans to play around with clothes hangers for a while. Um, and they loved it, especially the Brazilians. And if a Brazilian approves of the coffee that's made, it is yeah. excellent coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, the jackpot machine. I love it. 
So the way the machine works is you walk up to him, you shake his hand, and then he moves around and makes bleep bleep noises. And then he, his hand disappears and then the, the, the little roller things move. And then if you win, he pushes out lemons from the box. And then he goes bleep 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 again. <laughs> so that's him crawling out of it in the night. So that was a uh, gig in Republica. Lots of big talks. Uh, Cory Doctorow was there. Um, uh, okay, this is... I'm just going to play this very quickly. It's okay, there's nothing spoken of this music. It kind of summarizes the whole thing. That's Mate happening in the background. <laughs> Cairo. gathering has put together a sort of a, um, a directory of all the makerspaces and hubs that uh, it is currently involved in. So you can take a look at this later on. Okay, so um, can I move on to Shenzhen or should we switch to somebody else and then come back to me? Okay. Right, so, um, Shenzhen was amazing. Uh, it's quite a bit of a contrast going from cold, freezing, 15 degrees, no, less than that, <laughs> 10 degrees in Berlin <coughs> to incredibly hot, sweating buckets, Shenzhen. It was very hot. So, luckily, I had some time in between over here. Uh, but the idea behind Shenzhen was to do a seven-day camp where people would come from different parts of China and make a makerspace, which would then become part of the Maker Fair. Okay, so we got there early, obviously, and while we were there in this new so, sort of software business park, um, together with Seed, there's a it's triple E. So for about a week, I was basically annoying everybody, saying Seed all the time. So this is the container, um, and these are the, the folks that we were working with. I'm going to introduce every single one of them and tell you the background. I'm kidding again. So we got ideation happened, we got on top of things, more ideation happened. Oh, and there was a problem. Um, there were lots of problems. We didn't have the material which we were supposed to use to make the makerspace, so we kind of had to improvise. Um, and while we were setting up, the Maker Faire was being set up, and I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but you see those panels on the floor, those are all LCD panels that go up onto the screen, so there's a huge LED display that was being set up. So what we did was to sort of steal their garbage. 
<laughs> and then that sort of set the trend. We went around looking all over the place for more and more and more and more and more and more. And more. <laughs> so that became uh, the adventure. We got all the, the stuff together, more ideation, and then first order of business, get some shade. So shade happened, got everybody together. And while this was going on outside, we also had activities indoors. Seed has a beautiful office. Um, which they had just moved into uh, in that location. So everybody, all the participants got this box. And what I what's in the box is a whole bunch of good stuff. And this is the purpose of uh, Maker Camp. All the participants, they uh, have to work with the, the kit and come up with a project. And that project would then be taught to children in schools <coughs> in or, uh, around ancient Sent. So that was the objective, and it went horribly wrong, uh, <laughs> of course. But it also went horribly right. You'll see why in a second. So lots of ideation, planning, getting people together, uh, talks. This is Caesar from Hong Kong. He came over. Uh, that was a different adventure. I'll talk to you about that. Um, Yanki Lee from uh, Hong Kong as well, design center. She was amazing. Um, she was talking about, well, teaching. Um, some show and tell happened in between, more talks happened over Skype, uh, more talks, more presentations, gamification. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Lynn, and Lynn is amazing because she's one of our mentors and she's from Shenzhen, and uh, she's uh, learned Arduino uh, by herself, and she's come up with a project that was for Maker Camp, and she helped us with translation, and she helped organize, and she's pregnant. <laughs> She's also expecting, so, I mean, she's a powerhouse, this lady is amazing. So this was the worst part about Shenzhen, and the pictures on Facebook, on my Facebook page, when you see later on, will not tell you this. So if you want to know more about the horrors of Shenzhen, you come talk to me later on. Uh, the best part about Shenzhen is obviously this place. Who recognizes where this is? Excellent. So you know what this is. This is just madness. Yeah. <laughs> It's just amazing madness. It's it's just it, it is it is haven for everyone who is a maker. You have to experience this, and I've coined a phrase: so you get from one place to the next, and there is so much innovation happening just on that table over there. The stuff that he's using to clean, the stuff that they're doing behind the, the table, and this is going on everywhere. Every building that you see, every floor that you see, every little desk that you see, there is incredible innovation happening. This is a micro factory and they're assembling phones. So they've, they've set up with everything that they need, and this is like heaven. And you've got, I don't know how many people squeezed in there. It's amazing. So this goes on, oh, this is amazing also. This is the entire Apple lineup. Uh, none of these are genuine. Yes, I have a small size. You have the baby iPhone. I brought along with me one of the most latest iPhones, which is a baby iPhone. Yes. Wow. wow. So you can pass that oh around. Sure it, it totally works, right? It totally works. Yes. It totally works, totally works. I, I have another one. <laughs> so that was, that was because we met so Sean. Android 4.3. <laughs> so I met a SIM card. dual SIM. This one has a single SIM, but I also have the dual SIM one. And they all work. It's amazing. Uh, I, I iPhone 6 minus. Say again? <laughs> well, good question. I don't know. Only one way to find out. <laughs> I will pass it around so you can see. Yeah, so take a look. If it's based on the same chip, this one there. It is. It, well, I, I'm not sure because. You mean MTK yeah. Yeah, yeah, MTK. MTK. Sean and Bunny. Sean. Sean is the guy who directed me to this place, and it was an adventure oh. on its own. He said, "Look out for a building that has a fish tank in it," <laughs> and I found it. I'll tell you that later on if you like. Um, I cannot tell. But yeah, it's I relentless. Might, there is I would have to disassemble it, which probably prevents show. So there's, there's more and more and more. Oh, I love this one. This is an entire station with just firmware updates happening. So this is like the software corner of the building. He's got all of the, he's got all of the firmware going into I don't know how many different phones at the same time. And they're doing this day after day after day after day, and it's amazing. It's just uh, mind-boggling. So you keep doing this, and, and every time you go there, I've coined this phrase. It's called HQB syndrome. HQB is Hua Bay, and syndrome is the blah, 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 I can't finish a sentence type of thing that happens. Because you're, you're sensory overload. You can't really take it all in at the same time. There's just phenomenal amount of stuff going on. 
Oh, I love. I fell in love with this thing. I mean, who doesn't want this now, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> and this is a small one. <laughs> so the place where we found this was was in Huachang Bay. These guys found it from Huachang Bay. Oh, yes, yeah. And I absolutely love these guys. So Ian was there, of course, but. Um, was it Chris? I think it was Charles. Uh, this guy, he was working there at the time, and he was working on this thing, which is taking a bunch of uh, feature phones and turning them, sort of trying to uh, get, m mapping what you can do with those feature phones. Kind of similar to what the MTK thing, but he was doing it from a you know black box approach. And it's kind of cool. So he was there and he was talking about that. Uh, of course, the place is amazing. I love this. Um, yes, and this is the outside of the building. In case you go hunting for it, outside looks like that. That's 42. Look for 42. 42. <laughs> Geek reference. And of course, we took a thermal picture. So that's all of us. That's half the group, actually. The other half didn't make it because of the heat. So it's appropriate. So the container got some upgrades while we were there. Was, this was tremendous fun. It was just tremendous fun. Yeah, and oh look, bunny ears. Yes, <laughs> yes, I often visited this. <laughs> that can mean only one thing. <laughs> uh, this is Katya, I must mention Katya. Katya is showing off, um, she's basically flashing everybody in the group. So if you pull back uh, uh, in the picture, you'll see everybody taking pictures of her belly. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. But what she's showing is this lily pad thing, and this. Uh, uh, she's a wizard at wearables. She's designed this thing, which is conductive makeup, and you should look her up. There's a drone that you can control by winks, and a phone app that you can control by gestures of your hair. So if you twirl your hair, it starts recording. If you twirl your hair another way, it stops recording. <laughs> so she was there to get everybody excited about wearables and soft. Uh, so all of these things that we put together were then featured at the Aki party, the Aki party yes. which Takasu will tell you more about. It was tremendous fun. So all of this is from the kit. Uh, more projects, fun projects. Uh, this is paper folding, so origami. Yeah. Um, this is my uh, workshop and it was tremendously fun because uh, the very next day we had to go to the university. So half of them went to university, the other half went to high school. Uh, most of the dinos went uh, wound up in the high school, but we took some to the university as well. Uh, so, you know, usual curiosity. And this is the crazy group. Oh, and more people started showing up the closer we got to make a fair. So this is uh, Tomas Sokolendi. Uh, no prizes for guessing which country he's from. Uh, but he is from Pebble. And uh, he was there because Pebble and Seed have a collaboration, which I find terribly exciting. Um, this was Massimo, the guy, uh, Arduino guy. Genuino guy. Hmm? Yes. So he was there, it was tremendous fun to talk to him. He was being followed around by a number of people. Uh, and other people as well, who were dressed just like me. <laughs> um, these are the guys from Make Fashion. Um, again, phenomenal work. The sort of pieces that they put together were listening to muscle activity. And I've never spoken to uh, a fashion designer about algorithms before. So these guys know what they're into and it's, it's tremendous fun. Um, this is um, the Zado modules that Seed produces, um, which are these tiny little modules. Uh, you can connect them together and make fun things with. Um, so I got the chance to meet with Nosk, he's the product uh, designer for the entire range. And so these are the two guys that are com combined. So the Pebble guy and the Seed guy are going to be producing modules that are wearable on your watch. So the smart watch remains a watch and you add modules to make the watch even smarter. So that's coming out soon. So we have other guests. This is Kang from Malaysia and Cindy who's in fascinated with the OLPC. <laughs> Uh, this, these are the guys from Hong Kong who are doing Make Camp, Maker Camp, but they were sponsored by Google, we weren't. Um, and of course, Eric from Strawbees. Oh, this was so much fun. He's going to be here at the Maker Fair, and I, oh, you must. If you haven't seen Strawbees before, 
you have to get into it. They have their own microcontrollers and stuff, but the coolest thing was this flying drone that was made entirely out of strawberries, which flies. That's what it looks like. I don't have a video of that, unfortunately. But well, it's there on Facebook, I think. Yeah, so that's us. That's it. That's all I got. Will you make a show of the origami? Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Um, you can, I can plug this in later on. If you guys are interested, we, we'll take a look at this. But I'm also going to have this probably somewhere at the Maker Faire. Uh, it's a very simple thing. It's got a servo inside with some magnets and some Whoa. Uh, And there are controls that go down. And you can step on the controls. So when you step, it moves. So you dance around while it does. Great. You know what this is? Just stuff that I found in Ho Chiang Bay. Um, it's a USB. Please show the comment for his presentation. Brother, introduce 